The Cost of Goods Told podcast is made possible by the following sponsors. Duke's Premium Meats Home Delivery is committed to providing you with the best quality meat delivered right to your door. Offering certified Angus beef, grass-fed beef, Wagyu, and many more premium options, nobody beats Duke's Meats. Make sure to check out all that Duke has to offer at dukespremiummeats.com. Criswell Culinary aims to create a new standard of unique, affordable hot sauces that satisfies the more developed cravings of today. Bernie Brand Texas-style hot sauce is a boldly layered sauce with density and personality to proudly represent Texas. Go to BernieBrand.com to find a retailer near you. That's Bernie, B-O-E-R-N-E, Brand.com. Zero Point Organics grows and supplies microgreens for over 30 major restaurants in the Houston area. Consistently perfect quality in flavor and appearance, their microgreens will be the best you or your customers have ever had every single time. Go to zero, Z-E-R-O, dash pointorganics.com. Can you believe it's been a year? Can you believe it's been a year? I don't even know what so day of the week it is right now. So much, so much, so, is, so much is for changed. a year to go by. That's amazing. And like, yeah. we're all still here <laughs> drinking a beer together. Yeah. I, well, I'm very appreciative of that. Yeah. Hell yeah. I can't believe it. <laughs> when I was just only doing pop-ups, that was the scariest part of my life. Really? I mean, some days I'd make amazing money and I didn't have to work for a month. And then there were some times where <laughs> if it didn't go so good because of weather or something, I'm like, yeah. damn, what do I do with all this brisket? What do I do with all this pulled pork? What do I do with all these sausages? And, you know, I'm like, I'm not a barbecue restaurant. I'm doing barbecue pop-ups or just one-off pop-ups. I'm like, what am I supposed to do with this product? Yeah. And it's like, okay, let me call like a bar and see if they want to buy it. Or let me go see if I can go do another like backup pop-up. <laughs> the next day or something right. to like utilize this stuff and make my money back. I was scared out of my mind sometimes. It was like, I can't pay rent. I can't pay gas. You know, I'm like, well, how the hell am I going to like buy more food to do another pop-up if I so, didn't make my money yeah, back on that? You're running around without insurance, you know? And I, yeah. like I that, forgot you know? about that because I, I know as chefs, right? You guys are used to crazy hours, crazy, mm-hmm. you know, crazy days and all that. I know you're used to that, but I don't really think about, cause I'm always focused on the talent of the food. I don't really think about, you guys being uncomfortable with well, where's my next job because yeah. i would freak out right? yeah. if i don't have a job yeah right? and i'm not out hustling as hard as i can and showing some return on my hustle i'm like yeah shit i need to go get a job even know? if it's just a baseline something mm-hmm. you know, that's, that's what i tell guys it's like look even if you just have a baseline job as a barista dude you probably got you <laughs> probably i mean red lobster had pet insurance for yeah. servers you know no, and it was no like way. are you freaking kidding me like do that. Make sure you've got something that's that's solid. Do it Monday through Friday or whatever you need to do, or Monday yeah. through Thursday, Monday through Wednesday, yeah. just so that you know you've got a baseline to freaking survive. Yeah, I think a lot of people they get it twisted and they're like, "Okay, I'm used to making this." I'm like, "Yeah, you're used to that, but what's what's the bare minimum you need to survive right. to pay your rent, feed yourself, get gas in your car, make sure you show up to work?" You know, like, "Oh, I'll make." I made 70,000 in my old job. I'm like, yeah, but I don't got 70,000 for you, man. So what's, what do you need to be like alive and thrive a little bit? And grow, yeah. And they're like, oh, well, I can't do that kind of job. I'm like, okay, you ain't hungry enough then, man. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. This ain't the job for you. Yeah. Well, that's, that's, that's kind of the cool thing that I think is gonna be about watching this grow, mm-hmm. is that the opportunity for so many different things to kind of come out of it, from the creativity between the beers, to the utilization of the byproduct of the beers, to mm-hmm. what's going to come out of that kitchen, you know, to what's coming out of those pits. I mean, you know, you're doing your own salami, no, not salami, uh, pepperoni, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, with, uh, you know, with, with the pizzas and everything. I, I think that this will develop into its own freaking, I don't know, what do you call it? Um, mad scientist type of lab, you know? On, on well, lines, you got the mad you know? scientist anyway. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's like, you know, you hired the mad scientist, right. let, them, let them play. And, and you I, still have that kind of freedom? When you came over, I'm sure you guys oh, had yeah. a heart got, to heart. And yeah, we got 100% freedom. That's good. The only thing they required was badass pizza and the best wings in Houston. Well, and yeah, we got that. I'll, I'll, I can't speak to the wings or the pizza, but I can tell you that very reputable <clears throat> food people in this town have talked about the pizza mm-hmm. specifically and how yeah. good they are. Yeah, I haven't tried the wings. I haven't anybody talk about the wings. It's driving me nuts because we can't keep up. <laughs> we can't keep up with demand. We don't have enough storage. We got firepower. I got talented people coming in to learn how to do the pizzas. 
But we just still can't keep up. Because of human or because of the pizza oven itself? Um, <laughs> storage. Okay. That's the biggest problem, storage. Um, this week we're trying to fix that. Um, but yeah, we're every day, like, I mean, I created a pizza Bible that all you got to do is follow these instructions and we should be able to produce the best pizza in Houston. But it's like on the weekends, the pizzas alone will go through 150 pies at lunch and then we're sold out. <laughs> and I was like, well, why don't you make more? I'm like, guys, these are like 72 hours, slow, cold fermented doughs. Like right. I can't just whip it out of my back pocket and say, boom, we got more pizza. <laughs> it's like saying make works. more brisket, right? Just yeah. make more brisket. Almost yeah. exactly the same. So that's make the biggest bagels, hurdle. Right? <laughs> I love the ignorance of those statements. Yeah. And, and intentional or unintentional people, when people say things like, well, I don't understand why you can't make more. Or mm -hmm. why can't you stay up all night and yeah. just keep making dough? I'll tell you what. Why don't you come up here while we're making dough and hang out? Yeah, it's nuts. <laughs> I got, Get out of your bed, right? I got two people running pizzas in the morning and then just hired another person to start helping for two people at night just to keep up with production, uh, the prep schedule. Everything we do is scratch. Yeah. Nothing comes from you know a frozen pepperoni. It's not a frozen sausage. Like We're doing everything from scratch. Wow. So. Like it's it's getting insane. No surprise there. Though. It's getting <laughs> insane. Like it yeah. started insane though. I mean, yeah. like literally the day you opened, what was <laughs> yeah. it? They had like a banquet up here for hundred something people or something. Yeah. It's like you. I, I don't know if you've had a chance to catch your damn breath because no. it was like that, and then into the holidays, it's like all right, let's start twenty twenty like really gray or yeah. something, man. It, <laughs> like I don't think it's hit me yet that we've opened up this place and that you know we've got some good recognition and. Yeah, we're doing good food and beer. Yeah, but I'm like, man, this is not what I expected. This is not where I want to be. Yeah. Like, you know, myself, like, I want to go a little bit higher and, you know, fine tune it a little bit. But I mean, we're getting there. This is yeah. two and a half months in. So, All like, right. we're getting there. I mean, I, you know, I'll say this at the risk of sounding like I'm kissing your ass, but I've known you long enough. I don't have to. I feel like we know each other well enough. You're, you can read beat bullshit right away. But, mm -hmm. you know, good leaders, they don't focus on the numbers. Right? Yeah, good yeah, yeah. leaders and call it mid-management if you will yeah. the people sit at the top look at spreadsheets yeah. right? people who are in the middle grinding it out feet yeah. on the ground managing the process mm -hmm. are always like you know what we could be better we could have more efficiency here we could do this a little bit better if we just move this here or that there or find a little more storage we can put out 175 pies and let's set 150 yeah. and then the numbers go somewhere else yeah. but that shows great leadership on your part of, of not micromanaging but, mm -hmm. but knowing it well enough that it can be better yeah. And that, but you're already off to a great start. I mean, that's my job. That's what they pay me for. It's like, <laughs> let's come up with a solution how to fix this. Like, yeah, I can go tell my sous chefs, uh, do this and this and this, but that still does not like meet the expectation of what we really need, you know? So, yeah, yeah I do a lot of the back end uh, number stuff. I like it. Like, that's why I really love Beavers because they taught me that. Like, not that they're tight wads, but money was tight. Yeah. As everyone knows. Sure, like, sure. You know what I mean? Well, like, the restaurant business is tough, right? So that's like kind of really cool that I can still focus on numbers, but still not worry about it where I'm like, okay, we're not going to do this because it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Like I've got full support on the owners where if we're losing money, but it's something super badass and like super limited, that's going to create a hype to bring people here. Go for it. Do it. We're all about that. The same thing with the beers. A beer financially might not make sense to make because it costs so much per beer. But if it's an amazing beer, fuck it, produce it. Yeah. Right. And yeah. everyone's going to enjoy it and not care about what it costs. Is there a little bit more buffer because it is, it, it, it's got such a beer presence and it's its own supply that you've kind of got this margin to kind of play with? It's kind of like hotels. Like hotels, mm -hmm. you, you know, you have a restaurant in there. You don't care if it just breaks and even yeah, yeah, yeah. you want a mm -hmm. badass mm -hmm. restaurant yeah. that people are booking rooms that you have a high profit margin on on the rooms mm -hmm. and so forth so you can kind of survive that while yeah. a restaurant who's buying from a third party this is this is you know your own supply mm -hmm. um does that have have they had conversations where they're like hey look you've got a little bit more room to play than a traditional restaurant absolutely i mean so sales cures all that's right. that's the <laughs> yeah, old saying right, right? Exactly right. you know right. so that cures all so if we got all these badass beer sales of course like i mean the numbers we do here are insane compared to some of the other places that i've worked at and just tracking that and seeing okay like oh well damn i in the back of my mind i need forty thousand in food 
it doesn't even make sense because I don't <laughs> need 40,000 in food because we got all the other sales all those other in buckets. beer right. and all the other parts of the hospitality merch. Uh, merch is a big seller. Is it really? Beer to go, giant seller. I didn't have that at mm-hmm. other outlets. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, that's just an extra little goodie that people are just picking up yeah. <laughs> and it helps the bottom line. Now, are you talking about beer to go like growlers? So growlers, you- six packs, bombers, okay, cases. So you sell real retail packs mm-hmm. of beer too as well. Yeah. I can't get this stout to go with this in this glass. <laughs> no, 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 no. You can put it in a bomber. You can buy a bomber, right, fill you, it no, up. You can put it in a growler and take it home uh, yeah, yeah. or you can buy it in a bomber. Okay. Yeah. Good to know. How has the menu kind of developed from day one to where it is now? Because you've, you've added a bunch of different things. Your staff has yeah. got a little bit of, of time under, under their belts. So day one menu, in my mind and on paper, was something totally different than what we got now. <laughs> uh, a lot of it was added after the fact just based on, you know, pleasing the public and whatever. And that's why it's, it's changing in the next two weeks. So get rid of some of this basic simple safe stuff right. and start getting playful and so i getting a rosh yeah yeah, yeah. get ready to a rosh the yeah. menu That's what yeah. Yeah. so i mean i mean it's still a badass menu don't get me wrong it's badass everything's on it like top notch um but that was playing it safe and we did it in like three spurts so it was like super tiny menu medium and then kind of large and um the next move is trim the fat expand it a little bit more, but like streamline it so it makes sense and we can cross utilize a lot of different mm-hmm. things. Mm-hmm. And again, be a little bit more profitable. Are, like, you gonna, are you gonna do seasonal stuff? Yeah, yeah, that's why we're changing the menu so quick. Okay. Originally when I first wrote the menu, shit, that was almost damn near six months ago. Mm-hmm. And um, I told them, I was like, guys, the menu is gonna be different by the time we open and we're gonna have to change it. No, let's just run with it, run with it, run with it. And I'm like, now it's a season problem. Yeah. And now we got to change it. So that's that's where we're at now. Okay. But you're also doing you're also doing different pop ups up here, which is kind every of cool. weekend like on the third floor. Yeah. It seems like you have the ability to I don't know if you want to do a, a taco stand or all the different things that no matter what the wedding or you know yeah your bachelor party or whatever whoever books this it's kind of like you know what we can create something up here for you just yeah. off the wall. That's that's really freaking cool that you have the ability to. Um, create for the customer and then have the space that you could create for mm-hmm. the customer. Yeah. yeah, and that's that's the cool thing. Like, we can do whatever we want. <laughs> like, no one's going to say, oh, man, that's disgusting. Like, this is a dip- different demographic than what Beavers was. Yeah, here, younger millennials, different kind of income, disposable income. Some people are like, oh, man, I really don't want to spend that much money. These guys, I don't think they care. Yeah. They want to have a good time. They want to get that view. Right. Badass food, badass beer. So out here, it's more of an experience uh, than a destination. A lot of people, like, they're going for the destination. And, I mean, yes, this is a destination, but mm. it's close by. People are Ubering. They're biking. They're walking. Um, they're not driving 45 minutes to an hour to get here. Right. Um, so that's the, that's the cool thing. It's a really it, – number one, is a great location. And then number two, yeah. the height of the building lends to <laughs> – the scenery, which over to your left shoulder is just downtown. I mean, yeah. it's, it's it's phenomenal view of downtown, looking right over these little mm-hmm. warehouse buildings, and and people can hang out all day. Yeah, as long as the weather's nice, or it's yeah. like pouring down raining. I'm assuming uh, <laughs> people can just hang out. Oh yeah, and, and I, hang out in the neighborhood too. Because yeah. I mean, you're talking about like you know a pretty artsy crowd right there. Mm-hmm. And there's that yep. that rock climbing and and, and gym over there. That, yep. that's really cool. Texas Monthly is right over there mm-hmm. too. Then you have... Is this considered uh, first ward still? Second. Second, second ward. ward. Okay. Second ward. Second, yeah. Yeah, because then there's that, that one center that's got uh, Poten mm-hmm. and then uh, Awesome Bites in there as well. You know, so like, there's, you know, you could literally hang out in this area yeah. and you not could go yeah. 10 minutes So that's hop hop, that was the know? whole purpose of, you know, when John Deal opened all this. Yes, it's taken years, but... Sawyer Yards is supposed to be a destination where people can walk around and go to multiple places and not keep driving. Right. Yeah. Well, so this is going to be a, a, the Sawyer Yards is going to be yards where, yeah, okay. So all this, this field is going to be restaurants, bars, whatever. Oh, you got right your, here, really? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You got your artsy stuff. So all that on the weekends is opened up at night. You can walk around with wine or champagne. The other higher end food places over there. 
all the apartments are all building that's going to be open so like two years ago this place was super unsafe to walk around yeah, yeah, yeah. you would not want to come and hang out over here yeah. no matter what that's why i kind of felt bad for some of these other places I'm like they opened up too early mm-hmm. uh yeah they got their feet wet and they yep. still got the space it's cool but they did it too early and they had to change concepts a little bit to kind of like make sense for the neighborhood um but now you got like breweries walking distance even from here they were here before us <laughs> which is super cool um and then you know there's a lot of you know high-end apartments over there again people these if they're living there they got disposable income yeah, yeah. oh for sure you know well the mindset is different than the gallery too right true the gallery will spend money but yeah. they're a little more conservative mm-hmm. and they want a different menu and out here you've got single no no in, single no kids yeah double income no yeah. kids right and you yeah. got people living together and generations just more liberal if you will with the spending of their money and mm-hmm. their lifestyle. Yeah. So you're in a great spot. I yeah. think you're in a great spot. I mean, shoot, two days ago. I mean, I, when I say a pack, I don't even know if a pack even makes sense, but a small army of scooter, <laughs> scooter moped people came up here. A gang. Yeah, 30 deep and parked in front. I was like, oh my God, this is nuts. It's super cool. And they came up and party. Really? And they got drunk and... Scooted and, home. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, shit, this is nuts. <laughs> and they were looking at me like, can we park here? I was like, I don't care, man. Just as long as y'all like, are doing everything by the, the rules and this and that, don't block the exits, you're fine, man. Right. <laughs> but it's, it's super cool. And then the same thing with the bicycle groups. Um, that's awesome. That's, that's, that's going to be the next thing that I think is like the running groups, the biking groups, yeah. and things like that in this area that are looking for a spot that once they're done with a run, mm-hmm. a scenic run, yeah. you know, that they can come and get a drink at. You know, I, so uh, they planned ahead. it. The bike trail, running trail, mm-hmm. yeah. will hit here. I mean, it's two streets over. So B Cycle is putting in a stand that's paid for by Sawyer Yards. Oh wow! Um, I mean, those things are expensive. Mm-hmm. Those What's little what bike ports. Oh, the, uh, like the rent a bike. The B cycles, right? yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So like you just go up. You do either the mm-hmm. app or you can use a card and you yes. just hop on a bicycle and you go around. Yeah. <laughs> see, I'm old. I don't know about that. I own my own bike. Wait, yeah. wait till they like, have I'm the like, electric scooters come around. That'd be I want to see, I want to see Darren on I'm going to buy a scooter. scooter. I will buy a Vespa. I'm going to hang the leather. No, 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 no. These are like the electric, like the birds. Oh, no, no, no. The, yeah. Those I, are fun. I want a Vespa. <laughs> yeah. I, I've been I looking see. into them. I want to buy my, myself one. And I'm not going to spend a thousand dollars on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you I that. They're proud. Or a boosted board, you know, one of those electronic, uh, 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 skateboards, yeah, you know, they're like those are long cool. boards. Those are damn cool, man. I've got a long board, but it doesn't have a motor on it. Yeah, so <laughs> I'll put a motor on it. You need to start putting a motor on it. I saw you after you climbed these stairs, man. I was yeah. like, oh man, I had all that gear, dude. Where were you? <laughs> the elevator was slow I was as hell. All this up, you see this gear? <laughs> I took the elevator actually. I should have had a beer on the first floor and then took the stairs. I was gonna say, stop done. and everything. What'd so what what distinguishes first floor, second floor, and third floor, if, if you don't mind kind of walking through that for Buff Brew? So I might be the wrong person to ask because, like, <laughs> my story is, like, kind of, like, quicker. But anyways, uh, the first floor, so it's all in progression. Mm-hmm. Each level gets a little bit more fun, a little bit more exciting as it goes on. Um, but the first floor is kind of, like, tip the hat to the old school location, which is, like, the warehouse location classic brewery um the core beers on tap and then kind of open it up a little bit to the public with um picnic tables and where they can kind of hang around and be casual yeah Mm -hmm. second floor it's full service restaurant full bar not full bar we will have it but with service servers you know and uh third floor beer garden private dining room up here the vibe is a little bit, I mean, not a little bit. It's totally different. Um, people are doing the selfies and taking pictures of the downtown skyline. <laughs> uh, this is the place to be. Yeah. Like, it's super cool. Um, My skyline is amazing. Yeah. Just yeah. the way the building <clears throat> is positioned and how close it is in proximity. Yeah. Yeah, this, this will be, this, this, is, this has got to be the new destination for selfies. Yeah. <laughs> if, for selfies. If, someone, like yeah if, someone, if someone nominates that spot, this should be the spot. Yeah. Maybe we should nominate the spot. Maybe it's, that's what it is. If you're listening to the audio version of this podcast, go ahead and hop on YouTube because we've got it in the background and everything. And it's, it's absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. It, it was, I, I put a picture up and it was just like, everybody was just like, yeah, if, if you're going to record a podcast, record a podcast that's got that view. No one's got that. Yeah. View. I always tell people, I'm like, the pictures don't do it justice. Every night I come up here, 
which is like at least two or three or four times a week. <laughs> and I try to take a picture of it. The picture sucks. It's like, okay, I might as well just put my phone away and just look at it yeah. and enjoy it because my camera is not going to take a nice picture. Like once the, the sun starts dropping a little bit more and the, the red hues, the pink starts coming yeah, out, yeah. it's nuts. That's so why I was like, just, you know, I always tell people come early sunset gallery or the sunset area. Like it's the place to be. Yeah. I mean, even even the train coming by is a is a wonderful aesthetic. You yeah. Know? Like as as silly as that sounds, it's just kind of cool to be sitting here. Everyone like, loves train trains. Train. Yeah. It's a nostalgic <laughs> thing. So it's like we're a very family friendly brewery, you know. And I think that's a big trend in any brewery these days. Bring your family, which is yeah. kind of nuts pets, to me. Family. Um, <laughs> but still, it's like you see these kids just running, like, oh my god, I want to see the train. Same thing with adults. As goofy as it sounds, <laughs> no matter what the age, people get excited to see that train. Yeah. And it's super cool. Because yeah. even on the second floor, you still have an awesome view and, and, and access to see all of this, yeah. which, is, which is so damn cool. It's you really don't have cool. to just be on the third floor yeah. to get that. You yeah. Know? So I know we didn't do an intro or we anything did not to do this, but I mean, I remember the first podcast we did, we just ran right into it. Did we really? So, yeah, we literally just started talking. That's how Rosh is. He takes shit over and he's like, I'm here. Let's go, bitches. Hey, no, no, because I mean, that was, that was, um, you know, you brought out some food and everything, which was, which was super cool. I can't believe that that literally was a year ago to, to almost to the day. I think it's like three days early. I'm trying to think uh, what we year. had. Was it cheese own? She bought us a we platter of cheese own. Nice. You know, I Maybe think we a had burger. the burger. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I don't remember what else. I wish I had pieces to give you all tonight, but yeah. we're already out. Nah. You're out. All right, we'll come back. Yeah. We'll definitely be back. Yeah. We got wings. So yeah, we got wings. Oh, yeah. We're going to order wings when we get we done. plenty of wings. My daughter's hanging out drinking water. And I said, hey, you want something to eat? Beer? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Ross offered my daughter beer. She's 16. He's going down when we leave. We I did not. I suggested. <laughs> I didn't offer. <laughs> <laughs> there's a difference because there's a pause with a suggestion. Yeah. With an yeah. offer, there's a, here you it's go. State of Texas. <laughs> uh, but I remember how good the food was back then. And I'm sure it's no less. Yeah. So, no, less no the food here is fantastic. <laughs> we'll, we'll get into that on, on part two because, you know, we'll talk about the food. We'll talk about what you're trying to trying to do with the, with the barbecue because you got your pits here now mm -hmm. and everything. Um Welcome to the Cost of Goods Told podcast. 2020. Be right back with, uh, with part two. <laughs> the Cost of Goods Told podcast is made possible by the following sponsors. Criswell Culinary aims to create a new standard of unique, affordable hot sauces that satisfies the more developed cravings of today. Bernie Brand Texas Style Hot Sauce is a boldly layered sauce with density and personality to proudly represent Texas. Go to BernieBrand.com to find a retailer near you. That's Bernie. B O E R N E brand.com. Zero Point Organics grows and supplies microgreens for over 30 major restaurants in the Houston area. Consistently perfect quality in flavor and appearance, their microgreens will be the best you or your customers have ever had every single time. Go to zero, Z E R O pointorganics.com. Duke's Premium Meats Home Delivery is committed to providing you with the best quality meat delivered right to your door. Offering certified Angus beef, grass-fed beef, Wagyu, and many more premium options, nobody beats Duke's Meats. Make sure to check out all that Duke has to offer at dukespremiummeats.com. Yeah, I always tell people, that if was like, really good they too. haven't had any of the beers, go for those. And a couple of my buddies, like, because they're just used to drinking Crush. I mean, that's all I'll drink. Yeah, I like, like I'll have, I'll, wow. I've tasted those. I've had, like, a couple, you know, and I'm like, okay, I know what it tastes it's like. It's complex, but it's not complicated. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, you get, it's really rounded well and finishes well. And sometimes you drink a stout and you're like, what the, what is that? What is yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I got turned on by chocolate stouts initially, and then a coffee stout later, like a Vietnamese coffee stout. Yeah. I was like, this is fucking badass. I don't want regular beer anymore. I want to sip a little stout. <laughs> so... If you like stouts, I, we gotta let you try one of our other beers, um, the Wake and Bake. Yeah, that, that's a that's a yeah. mind fuck right there. Who's smoking weed when they're making these names? Uh, everyone. Turtle, Turtle murder. Yeah, a lot of those bake. guys. <laughs> but the maybe I need to apply for a job. Yeah, hey, Derek, come on, that dish yeah. position open because oh, I can yeah. handle that. Oh yeah. <laughs> but the that that beer, the Wake and Bake. Um, it's a coffee beer, and when you taste it, it's like, okay, this is a, a porter. You know, this is like a dark beer. Yeah. No, it's a coffee blonde. 
Wow. Really? It's super good. The refreshing. It's Is like that a sh- downstairs. Yeah, I'll get y'all some. It's like to me, it's like a shower beer. <laughs> she said y'all they move taps. Right? Mm-hmm. Anyway, has your has your knowledge of beer like just gone exponentially up as, as you've been around it? Or no, I don't think so. I mean, like really? I, I've always loved beer. <laughs> like. I mean, there's a difference the between process, love and beer. The process behind it, yeah. I've uh-huh. learned a lot of that. Like, but the verbiage and kind of what's behind it. I mean, I've kind of known some of this stuff, but actually seeing it and like seeing what it takes to produce it, that's super cool. Yeah. Like these oh, guys yeah. take it as serious or more than what we do because they have to like TABC regulations and all this. Like they have to like pass all these regulations. Sure. If it doesn't make the regulation, they dump it. <laughs> there's beer down there I'm like no like that's <laughs> so many gallons of beer and they dump it just because it didn't make the QA specs did the one that you tasted the other day coming out of that little oh my god that little, was so good what was it pineapple something no um, that's the dreamsicle dreamsicle, dreamsicle. Yeah. yeah so did they just did it, make, did it pass oh yeah go to market yeah it's, it's kegged it's for it's, us right now it's up right now yeah, yeah. I saw that man on. it I was, was to get super good that's why I brought my daughter so she can drive us home yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah and I mean Tasting it right out of those bright tanks, like, you can't get that experience anywhere else. I was like, it really excites me. I'm like, damn, that's a good you beer. Got, you were excited about that. Yeah, I was like, man, this is so good. And, like, I had one of the brewers. I was like, hey, man, I don't know what I'm doing over here. I'm explaining shit to people, giving them a tour. I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm like, I mean, I kind of do. Yeah. But then he was like, hey, you want to taste something? I'm like, uh, yeah. And he, he opened up that little thing and yeah. poured us some beer. I was like. Okay. Yeah. Let's do this three or four more times. <laughs> Is it something and, and that you would uh, want to try your hand at eventually down the road? <laughs> oh, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what kind of scaling I can do. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. they probably have some kind of dummy proof thing where I was like, here you go, take these ingredients and make a yeah, beer. Yeah, it's called Mr. Beer. I own it at yeah. home. <laughs> you know, I'm sure there's some kind it's of thing. Like, homebrew kits. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. I mean, that's what they like. They do it on a different scale. So it's like homebrew scale, and then from there they magnitude it up to the next level. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then from there to the next level to the bigger tanks. So, I mean, apparently that was a huge process to scale up from what we did at the oh, other yeah, location sure. to here. Yeah. Like, y'all seen those tanks down yeah. there. They're yeah. huge. It's insane. Yeah. How much, how much is each? They all look like they're about the same. Any idea how many uh, gallons there are? No, they go by barrels. How many barrels? Uh, how many uh, gallons? Don't get me the line. How many gallons? Uh, I don't even know. Are they are they still utilizing the old location mm-hmm. kind of like as an R and D kind of mad scientist lab type? Not of thing, yet. Uh, it's still in for full production mode to keep up with this place, Jeez. and also for distribution. So, what we do here plus there, some of it's being distributed out to Texas, and then the rest is coming here. Okay, so so we're not even getting like cans. Or, everything's happening at the other location right now. So the size of this still isn't big enough. No. Wow, that's insane. Yeah. That's a good problem to have, but yeah, an expensive problem to have. Yeah. I mean, the tanks, it's rotation. So right now they're getting the rotation built up. Um, again, each one of these beers takes two to three weeks. So we got, I don't know how many tanks down there. Apparently, I had no clue what any of them do until like last week. <laughs> when I figured out, I'm like, oh, okay, so all these aren't doing what they're supposed what I thought they were doing. Like, no, man, that one's only carbonation tank and whatever. And this one does this. This is a fermentation tank. I was like, oh, damn, yeah. I thought they were all the same thing. They're like, no. <laughs> so, yeah. That's so, I, I, you know, so I'm drinking stout tonight. I love stouts. And I know there's multiple, multiple methods to making them. But yeah. I don't think the public would know that. No. Uh, you know, we talked, the last podcast was Jersey, Jersey Bagels. And we talked to them about, you put all this time and all this effort and all this labor into hand rolling bagels mm-hmm. where most people are just rolling by machine. Okay. Well, some people don't care that yeah. you're hand rolling bagels, right? Yeah. Some people don't care about the, the, the real blueberries that you're buying out yeah. of Wisconsin or wherever, right? I don't think some people ever really care, but they love that beer. So they're yeah. coming back. You know what I mean? Like not everybody's going to have the food science passion or the, sure. the, science, yeah. the passion but I think behind it. But. That's the beauty of... Um, this day and age where people are going out to all these breweries and they get the experience on seeing how it's done, what's going into it. Um, for most of the time here, our floor is hundred percent active production floor. Hmm. The other breweries operating at 24 hours a day. Jeez. This one's operating damn near 16, 18 hours a day. Yeah. So people are, they get to see it. They get to 
see the guys working on it it's not like machines doing it all like we have human beings doing this stuff like <laughs> they're infusing pecans and peanut butter into your beer oh and they go through so much of it it's nuts like i met the guy from um i want to say it was rio grande pecans or whatever and he was so excited he's like man i came all the way over here just to bring my girlfriend over here just to try this beer because y'all make it with my pecans Aww. And um, the girl was so happy. And like, oh, my God, this is so good. I mean, it is good. But, I mean, even talking to the brewers, after they make that beer, the, um, which one? The That's turtle, turtle murder. murder. Yeah. There's peanut butter and pecan sludge infused with beer in the tank. Oh, and imagine being able to eat that <laughs> or, or like dip cream. a cracker or something. You know what I mean? Like, ice cream, right? Yeah. <laughs> It apparently it's delicious. <laughs> you don't know yet, but I you haven't will. had it. And they were telling me about it. I'm like, why are y'all teasing me, man? This sounds great. <laughs> Let's freaking do it. But even like, yeah, some of the byproducts out of this stuff is like really, really good. Like some of these breweries are putting Fruit Loops and Cheerios and yeah. all these goofy things. And like those beers won't make it past two days. <laughs> they can't. Because it's like artificial yeah. adjuncts. It's not like real deal peanut right. butter. These guys are using like really expensive orange peel, vanilla, the coffee uh it's all legit stuff it's not just like dehydrated folgers like we're using like expensive coffee for some of these beers so could you talk about because i again i know we talked a little bit off mic about it but would you mind talking about the recruitment process that they kind of put you through so like they're they're obviously investing a significant amount of money into a new space Mm -hmm. into new production yeah they obviously know what the demographic is looking for. Mm-hmm. They didn't just go with one one application and said, oh, okay, this is, this is it. No. Do you mind talking about that a little bit? Yeah. I mean, apparently they went through tons of applications. A um, bunch of chefs from all over the country that came in, did cook tests. Um, they had some international guy come in too, I thought. Probably. I, yeah, I, I, remember, I, remember I mean, <laughs> so I got the call from Robbie from Blood Brothers he was like, hey, man, you should apply for this job. I was like, Very ah. cool. Yeah, I was like, I'm good, dude. Like, I'm working at Beavers. I'm happy. Everything's <laughs> fine. And I kind of put on the blind size, you know, yeah. like whatever. And then, again, hey, man, I really think you should go for this. I was like, I'm good, dude. Like, I'm fine. I had no clue that they were bringing people into Blood Brothers on Mondays and, like, doing chef tests with them. Oh, really? I had no clue. Huh. I had no clue. No one told me shit, whatever. <laughs> and then one day I was at home drinking Buff Brew. And he was like, hey, man, you really should call these guys. I'm like, no. <laughs> Dude, I'm drinking. Like, I'm not coming I'm to. Drinking. I'm drinking. He actually said, hey, come over to Blood Brothers right now. Yeah. I'm like, no, I can't. I've been drinking, dude. That's not good. No, come meet with these guys. They're our friends. I was like, no, man, that's not professional. <laughs> like, if you're trying to, like, get me to apply for a job and I'm drunk, yeah. shame on me. Not a good I'm idea. like, no. <laughs> and I forgot about it again. I was like, a week, two weeks go by. And he's like, hey, man. I was like, okay, f- book it, dude. Like, tell him I'm down. Just Sorry to get to you off my damn yeah. ass. And I'm like, okay, man, f- it, you know. And so we did it. And we just had the interview. And I was like, okay, these guys are for real yeah i was like they're not pulling my leg like this is really happening i had no clue i was like buff brew over there that's right. like i was like what am i supposed to do there i hadn't i knew about this but i didn't know it was going to be on this grand scale yeah and um and the the best thing with these guys i mean just sitting down with all of them we're all very like-minded individuals create creatives um kind of not dealing with like shortcut type things, you sure. know, and that's what I loved about it. I was like, okay, yeah. so <laughs> we can have fun and we can make some badass food. They're making the badass beer already. Like, this makes perfect sense. And then, you know, I had to break the news to Beavers and I went to John Deal. Was, he was the first person. I was like, hey, man, this is what's happening. He's like, Arash, you're an idiot if you don't go for that job. <laughs> you're an idiot. This is a one in a lifetime position. I was like, Damn, man, you're right. Right. Yeah, it, it worked out. It worked out pretty good. Was it hard to make the change, though? I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I know it's a great opportunity. Yeah. And you know that now, right? Oh, I mean, it's a, it's a ton of work, and we're still not even there yet. I mean, I wish I had three months ahead of what I did before we opened to yeah. get this place situated. But, you know, we're going through it. That's the question. How many full-service 
restaurants and breweries in Houston. Three, I think. So St. Arnold, you guys, and Carbot. 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 Okay. I mean, Eighth Wonder's got the little food truck. So does like no a lot label. Of, yeah, a no lot of them have like food, food trucks. trucks. Okay, but not full like service that. restaurants. No, I mean, no. You, you don't have a waiter coming to your table, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but at the same time, this is clear. I, I got excited now because this is clearly <laughs> the evolution yeah. of breweries in Houston. And the fact that there's only three with full service. Right. We can come three different levels and have a full menu, a full bar. Mm -hmm. It's super cool. And it's kid friendly, family friendly. And yeah. I know you're working on a dog area. Yeah. Yeah. Down, yeah. Down That's coming soon. I mean, people have been just, I mean, again, the area, the yeah. dogs. I mean, yeah. People rather bring their dogs and their kids over here. Yeah. You Do you know? feel like this is the evolution of the restaurant, though? Like, I've always thought that a restaurant on its own may not be enough, especially it's if you're not. going to be super creative. Whether you're going to, I, I think I've used the example before, the, the gallery furniture that had the brick and mortar little restaurant that they had attached to it. Yep. I thought, holy <laughs> someone figured it out. Have a furniture store have something that's got huge profit margins from yep. furniture and then you can have an awesome restaurant that people are going to go and they're going to have a cup of cocktails they're going to get you know food and then they're going to buy <laughs> a whole house full of you know furniture or something like that buy, i was like buy, right buy a tomahawk for 78 dollars a gallery furniture and then sure. spend 10 grand on your dining room yes yeah, exactly sure enough it, it, it didn't quite work out no. now it's like this little mexican restaurant yep. i'm like okay <laughs> so be it like whatever but I'm trying to I'm trying to think like because a restaurant profit margin is anywhere between five and at best ten percent, and and you have one one hood vent or one AC or one freaking uh, cooler go down, there goes that whole five ten percent. If you're attached to something that's got that profit margin, that's going to drive people in who are going to buy from their own supply type yeah. of thing. It. I mean, you could do some awesome food like you've been doing, yep. you know, and then also still have that profit margin that you can sustain. Right. You, know? you think it's the evolution of the restaurant to have in-house brewing? So years ago when I was in college, that was a cool thing to, man, there was a place in Rice Village. Um, names going over my head right now, but that place was super cool. They had decent food. Dirt cheap beers. Beers are 25 cents on Tuesdays or something wow. stupid like that. Something dumb. When were you born? <laughs> when did you go to college? That was, that was Rice University. 25 cents? Right over there. <laughs> Shit, let's roll. Man, let's get on our scooters nuts. and go over there. It was <laughs> And uh, I mean, we'd be walking around with four or five beers each. Yeah. And be wasted. But it, it definitely helps. I mean... Can everyone pull this off? Absolutely not. Right. No. So that was my, that, so yeah. I asked a loaded question because in my mind, I yeah. already, in my mind, I'm going to argue that can everyone pull this off no. and, and, and hold the liability and hold a brewmaster or whatever no. they're called and hold all the tanks and hold, I mean, I don't think it's so easy to get into the restaurant business. Yeah. It's so difficult to get in the beer business. Yeah. Right? So, you have a lot of money. That's true. And a, a lot, lot of, of patience. Yeah. A lot of people in Austin, um, they're doing the co-op deal. So they'll get groups of like 20, 30, 40, 50 people, and they're all partners and owners. And then they, mm -hmm. they create capital. So first they might start off as a restaurant or a food truck. From there, they'll buy equipment to create a bar. From that bar, they'll create revenue to buy the brew supplies. Right. And then from that then that kind of starts up a cycle on putting their own beers on tap and selling that. Sure. They're still selling their own food and then slowly get rid of some of the other people that they've brought in and partnered with and then put their own taps on the wall. Right. We're coming to the end, so we got to ask you this question. We're talking about challenges. Mm -hmm. Some of it's inventory related, you know, because you don't know. You're so new. You don't yeah. know what the tra foot traffic's going to be. Yeah. You don't know the order pattern. But what are some of the biggest challenges with you coming over here creating that kitchen all by yourself, ordering mm -hmm. everything. What's the biggest challenge with everything you had going on? Hiring, kitchen equipment, 
kitchen placement, you know, equipment placement. Yeah. What, what's the biggest thing? <laughs> for, getting, for, getting that kitchen open while people are booking freaking yeah. anniversary parties and, and everything. Yeah. And here's already. what I'm asking, because you think about the Koi barbecue, and you mm-hmm. think about the guys who are doing a bang-up job on, on pop-ups right now who are going to want to talk about a brick and mortar. Yeah. Share some of your experience when those guys listen. They're like, well, shit, we know we don't want to do that. Or we heard <laughs> Raj talk about this. I mean, what's the biggest thing? Well, I mean, I think the biggest thing is instead of, you know, paying somebody to do a lot of the work for you, do it yourself. Figure out how to build a table, how to set up a pizza oven, how to build a stainless steel table, where to position your dishwasher, the hood vents, all this, where your electrical's at. I think the biggest problem for a lot of these younger guys, like they'll pay somebody to do it for them and not be involved in the mix. Yeah. So when something does hit the fan, they don't know how to fix it. Sure. Um, with this project and Beavers, I had the opportunity to like build it from the ground up and come up with kind of solutions before there was problems, mm-hmm. um, picking the right equipment, you built those pizza ovens yourself, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, yes. remember, I remember seeing... The way he shook his head told yeah. me he did. No, yeah. The uh, dumbest process I've ever had to deal with in my life, but the biggest reward yeah. Yeah. ever. Because, like, we fucked it up three or four times, and to move those brick slates, I mean, they're heavy as shit. <laughs> they're like three or 400 pounds each, and to pick it up with three other guys with our fingertips and ah anyways <laughs> and then not yeah. break it set it back down yeah. without breaking and yeah. all that um insane but uh picking the right equipment the layout of the kitchen the flow bring someone in for their smoke testing fog testing you know like you have to make sure all your hoods are working right um <laughs> but tell me something that you've really enjoyed about the new opportunity here at, at buff that you didn't maybe have in the past. Not necessarily beavers. Yeah. Just in general, has it stretched you in a new way? Have you gotten yeah. creative in a different way? I think the creative process coming up is going to be a lot better. Um, you know, like-minded individuals, the creative flow is kind of encouraged. Yeah. Um, again, they're like, do whatever you want. Make sure it's good. <laughs> that's it. Those, that's are gold, it. those are golden words yeah, to, any chef, to any chef. To any chef. Do okay. whatever you want. And I'm not going to f***ing put foie gras on the menu and <laughs> caviar. That does not make You're sense so for a You're so shallow. Brew. I mean, well, come on. Get like, out of the gutter. <laughs> but, you know, most people will do that. They'll take advantage of it and start putting goofy stuff on the menu. Sure. Like, I would love to do what Tris is doing. I would love to do that. Why don't you collaborate with Austin? Why don't you do something with Austin? No, but still, that's not... For a beer dinner, absolutely. Yeah, man. Sure. Beer dinner, yeah. Hey, we can set trust. that up. Yeah. You could but, too, but we would be yeah. happy to set that up yeah. for you. But like normal menu, like I can't do that at the right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like they'll just yeah. go over people's head and they're like, huh, I'm not paying $37. <laughs> if, so our price point has to match what we're doing. Of course. You know what I mean? So um, being well, what's, creative. What's kind of like the the off the wall separator that that y'all are doing you know because we talked about doing your own pepperoni but like oh, what, yeah. what's the other things that you're doing here that are so i mean the pizza program alone is kind of like next level no one no one can pull that off we're still learning from it yeah we're running out selling out every day mm-hmm. um it's good and bad um you know we use all the 44 farms products everything we use is all natural uh, from chicken, Gulf seafood. Um, so we're trying to keep the integrity up. Right. You know, we're not going to use some janky seafood from wherever just to make the profits. Yeah, sure. Um, but also doing things that that are just fun. Like, we can't just serve mozzarella sticks. Right. Yes, people would love them. Right. <laughs> I love them. But I can't do that here. You can't do the chicharrones, chicharrones yeah, coated I'm m- sure mozzarella. I could. Why yeah. not? I know you could. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we got. That's the thing. Like here, we got to like break the mold. We can't be the next brewery. I look at all the menus of breweries mm-hmm. here: Colorado, <laughs> San Diego, uh, Florida, wherever. I look at all the menus. Yeah. Some people are doing really cool stuff. <laughs> Some people are doing the janky IQF frozen products that they just drop into a fryer. Yeah. That's not us. I don't think that would ever be us. Um, 
we got to take it to the next level. Like, with, there's a bunch of places in Austin that I love, and I want to get to that level. Well, Arash, I cannot thank you enough for, yeah, one, man. setting it up so that we could record here, which yeah. is an awesome space. Two, sticking with us and literally staying with us for a full year from start to to not finish, but to, to new a new stage in this podcast. Man, man. I want to give y'all props, man. <laughs> y'all have grown in the, the f***ing last year so much. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I'm embarrassed or I'm happy about that. But hey, no, hey, man, you should I'm, be happy. Look at all this now, man. <laughs> boom, boom, all this. We this is legit, it. man. Well, we've 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 worked hard, but we've had a lot of people along the way who have helped us. There you go. Gave us a hand up. Uh, you've been one of those people. We appreciate that. I feel like Quee right now. Quee over Blood Brothers. I don't know why I feel like Quee. I feel, <laughs> buff Brew. There I just go. want to give a big Buff Brew <laughs> shout out. He loves it. He loves it so. But we appreciate you coming. I know this is usually your day off, yeah. yeah. Uh, as most barbecue guys are, and restaurants has their days. So thank yeah. you for coming in, absolutely, getting us set up and, and hanging out. And uh, I mean, anytime you want to come back, you're always welcome on just Heck to yeah. pop in and hang out, absolutely, and, and educate us on something. <laughs> so. Well, awesome for all the listeners. I hope you all had a wonderful 2019. I hope 2020 is going to be an awesome year. Um, Cannot thank everybody enough who's been a guest on this podcast. Arash, again, cannot thank you enough for, one, giving us our start and now giving us a, a, a new home to host this podcast. Yeah, man. I think all of our guests are going to be super excited to come here, and and especially the pizza, because y'all te- you teased us like fucking crazy about that damn pizza, man. So I know we're going to get guests in here who are just going to be like, yeah, I'll talk to y'all for an hour, but <laughs> now I'm, I'm going to crush like four pizzas of Arash's. So. Yeah. yeah, we'll be back for lunch. Cool. Hey, yeah. 12 pizzas went out. That's two guys. That's yeah. Darren and Connor. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> thank you, man. Yeah, thank uh, you, guys. Thank you. thank you to our sponsors. Uh, as we always say, five stars, five stars. Like and subscribe. We're out. The Cost of Goods Told podcast is made possible by the following sponsors. Zero Point Organics grows and supplies microgreens for over 30 major restaurants in the Houston area. Consistently perfect quality and flavor and appearance Their microgreens will be the best you or your customers have ever had every single time. Go to zero, Z-E-R-O, dash pointorganics.com. Duke's Premium Meats Home Delivery is committed to providing you with the best quality meat delivered right to your door. Offering certified Angus beef, grass-fed beef, Wagyu, and many more premium options, nobody beats Duke's Meats. Make sure to check out all that Duke has to offer at dukespremiummeats.com. Chriswell Culinary aims to create a new standard of unique, affordable hot sauces that satisfies the more developed cravings of today. Bernie Brand Texas Style Hot Sauce is a boldly layered sauce with density and personality to proudly represent Texas. Go to BernieBrand.com to find a retailer near you. That's Bernie, B-O-E-R-N-E, Brand.com.